things, and I'm going to be reading Where on Earth is My Bagel with you. But first, we are going to talk about the story to make sure we're ready like good readers do. So first, I want to tell you that Where on Earth is My Bagel is a realistic fiction story. So that means it is made up, but it could happen in real life. And that makes me think of Junie B. Jones books. She is one of my favorite characters and she is not a real person, but everything that happens in her books could happen in real life. So when we read Junie B. Jones and when we read Where on Earth is My Bagel, we will see characters that act and think like people. They're gonna have problems and solutions just like that happen in real life. And also we're gonna see the text and the pictures working together to help us understand the story. Also, when we read, we are going to be uh, making inferences, which are smart guesses. Sometimes authors give you clues about characters or things in the story. They don't tell you directly the answers to some questions I might be asking. So we're gonna practice making inferences or smart guesses in this story. Also, before we read, I wanna make sure you know the power words. So please make sure you have your My Book ready. We're on page 108. And make sure you also have a pencil or a highlighter with you. So if you didn't grab that, go get it right now. And also I wanna remind you that you can stop the video at any time if you need to take a break, do some jumping jackses, jump, jumping jacks. Um, because I want you to be able to be following with me the whole time to help your fluency, okay? All right, let's get started. So our first word is darting. Can you say it with me? One, two, three, darting, good. If something is darting, it is moving from place to place very quickly. We saw a deer darting across the street, right? So it was going really, really fast. Another example, whoops. <laughs> Another example is the needle of the sewing machine is darting through the fabric. So you can use darting in a couple different ways. Okay, that word is darting. The second word, point with your finger, is smothered. Say it with me on three. One, two, three. Smothered. Good. Something that is smothered is thickly covered with something else. The delicious toast was smothered with butter and strawberry jam. Another example here in this picture, Jason smothered his grandfather with kisses. Isn't that sweet? So there's a couple different ways to use smothered. All right, the next word is nod. Say it with me on three, one, two, three, nod. You can move your head to that one too, right? A nod is when you move your head up and down to show that you agree, right? She gave me a nod and kept talking. Another example is with a nod from the conductor, the orchestra starts to play. So sometimes we don't even need to talk. We can use our bodies like with a nod to say yes. All right. The next word is slippery. Say it with me on three. One, two, three. Slippery. Good. Something slippery is wet, smooth, and hard to hold. The road was slippery after the rain. Another example here. I caught a fish, but it is too slippery to hold. Uh-oh. <laughs> All right. So that is slippery. And the next word is hollered. Say it with me on three. One, two, three, hollered, good. If you hollered, you shouted loudly. We hollered as loudly as we could. I picture someone hollering at a sports game, right? A baseball game, a football game. Um, that's where I think of hollering. <laughs> but also, we hollered to get her attention. Where might these kids be hollering? Mm -hmm. Maybe the playground, right? Or at the park. It's okay to holler there too. <laughs> All right, the next word is delight. Say it with me on three. One, two, three. Delight. Good. Delight is great joy. 
being together filled us all with delight. For sure, being together is usually delightful. Just like here, it is a delight to surprise grandpa with a cake, right? I think of birthday parties when I think of delight, right? People are usually pretty happy. Next word is fragrant. Say it on three, one, two, three. Fragrant, good. Something fragrant smells sweet. I smelled the fragrant flowers, just like this little girl. And in spring, you could be on a walk and, and really smell some fragrant things in the air. All right, and the last word is grunted. Say it on three, one, two, three. Grunted, good. Grunted, if you grunted, you made a low, deep sound. He grunted as he tried to lift the heavy chair or the men grunted when they were moving the couch because it was heavy, right? I also think of grunting when I've watched um, people play tennis, right? They grunt when they swing that racket and hit the ball because they are using all of their power. All right, so let's read these together. And remember, I'm gonna want you to read these with me when I'm reading the story. So let's start using our finger to follow along. Fingers ready? Ready, read. Darting, smothered, nod, slippery, hollered, delight, fragrant, and grunted. Good. All right, so you're going to stay right there on the page. We are going to now listen to an audio, not a video, an audio, um, a little bit about the author. Not the author, I'm sorry, the illustrator of this story. So we're going to meet Grace Lynn. Grace Lynn didn't always plan on being an artist. When she was young, she wanted to be an ice skater. She drew lots of pictures of herself twirling on the ice. She discovered that she could draw much better than she could skate. Ms. Lynn studied art in college. In 1999, she published her first book. She has illustrated many books since then and has won awards for her work. Today, she lives in Massachusetts with her husband. Okay, so that's a little bit about the illustrator. She wasn't sure that's what she wanted to do when she was young, but that's what she ended up doing. So maybe you all could end up being an illustrator of books. I know a lot of you are really good at art and drawing. Okay, so stay right there and let's go ahead and read the title together. I know that you've heard me say it a few times, so I think you're ready. When I read with kids, I like them to put their finger um, in the book and follow along with me as I read. And you can even mouth the words with me if you know them. And then make sure you read this story over and over to practice your fluency, okay? All right, so let's get our fingers ready on the title. Ready, read. Where on earth is my bagel? Good. And this is by Francis Park and Ginger Park, illustrated by Grace Lynn. Okay, now you can turn. All right, and here we are on page 110. All right, and I see some yellow words, so I'm going to need your help right away on these pages. Um, but hopefully you're going to be following with me the whole time. Okay. All right. Fingers ready on page 110. Ready? Follow. Once there was a boy named Yum Yum who lived in a village where the mountains met the sky. There were waterfalls rushing into streams of darting fish. There were lilacs gently blossoming on every hillside, but there were no New York bagels. Hmm. Next page, fingers ready, ready, follow. How a New York bagel popped into Yum Yum's head was a mystery. Perhaps it came to him in a dream, smothered with cream cheese, or maybe he heard sparrows singing of bagel crumbs in Central Park. However it happened, Yum Yum could not stop thinking about a golden brown bagel with a curious hole in the middle. The very idea made his tummy growl and his mouth water. 
Yum Yum declared, I want a bagel. All right, so where does Yum Yum live? Can you tell? What details show you or tell you about where he lives? Tell someone near you, or you can tell me, where does he live? Good, all right. I see um, hills right here. He lives on a, a city, in a city with hills. Right here it says, um, he lived in a village where mountains meet the sky and there's waterfalls rushing and there's lilacs on every hillside. So you could have pointed to the pictures or some of the text to tell where Yum Yum lives. Good job. Go ahead and turn. All right, fingers ready on page 112. Ready, follow. Now dreaming about a New York bagel and actually eating a New York bagel were worlds apart. Yum Yum wondered, where can I find a bagel? He wondered and wondered until he came up with an idea. I will send a message, he said. So he sat on a rock and began to write. Dear New York, I would like to order one bagel to go. Please send it to me as soon as possible. Respectfully yours, Yum Yum in Korea. Yum Yum carried his message to a mountaintop where birds flocked. Soon a pigeon landed on his shoulder. Yum Yum tied his message to the bird's tiny leg and the pigeon flew off into the clouds. Pigeon, he cried out, please return with my bagel. Page 113, ready, follow. Yum Yum waited and waited on the mountaintop. He waited until the sun dipped below the mountain. He waited until the sky was blanketed with stars, but the pigeon did not return with his New York bagel. Yum Yum decided that his bagel must be lost. Perhaps the pigeon dropped his bagel on the wrong mountaintop, or maybe it was delivered to the wrong place. I'm sorry, the wrong person. However it happened, Yum Yum would not give up hope. A search was in order, Yum Yum declared. Where on earth is my bagel? So this bagel popped in his head. And what, um, what is he doing to try to get the bagel? What do you think? Can you point to it in your book? Yeah, hopefully you're pointing over here to this note. He wrote a note and stuck it on a pigeon and hopes it gets to New York so a bagel can be brought back to him. Good. He's waiting and waiting. Nothing happened yet. All right, page 114. Get your fingers ready. Ready, follow. The next morning, Yum Yum visited Farmer On, who was pushing his plow in a field of wheat. Excuse me, Farmer On, Yum Yum said. Have you seen my missing bagel? Farmer An wiped the sweat off his forehead. Bagel? What in a farmer's field is a bagel? It is round and it has a hole in the middle, Yum Yum explained. Hmm, Farmer An said with a nod. He pointed to his plow wheel. Is that a bagel? Yum Yum frowned. No, that is not my bagel. I am sorry, Yum Yum, Farmer An said. I know about wheat that grows from the rich brown earth, but I know nothing about bagels. All right. Hmm. So why did he go see Farmer On? What is he doing? You can underline it in your book or tell me. Yeah, he's asking him, right? Have you seen my missing bagel? That's why he goes to Farmer On. He's really trying to find this bagel. Farmer On couldn't help. Okay, page 116. Next, Yum Yum visited Fisherman Key, who was on his boat shaking slippery fish out of his net. 
Excuse me, Fisherman Key, Yum Yum shouted. Have you seen my missing bagel? Fisherman Key threw his net back into the water with a splash. Bagel? What in the salty sea is a bagel? It is round and it has a hole in the middle, Yum Yum explained. Oh, Fisherman Key said with a nod. He pointed to his life ring floating below. Is that a bagel? Yum Yum frowned. No, that is not my bagel. I am sorry, Yum Yum, Fisherman Key said. I know about fish that swim in the sea, but I know nothing about bagels. Hmm. So again, why does Yum Yum go to Fisherman Key? What's the same about him visiting Fisherman On and Fisherman Key? I'm sorry, Farmer On and Fisherman Key. Yeah, he wants, he thinks that they can tell him where a bagel is, right? But they can't help us and see how the author didn't need to say um, that Yum Yum is going to these um, people to help. He just puts it in the text and puts them in the pictures and that's how we know. You're making inferences, good. All right, page 118, fingers ready? Ready, read. Next, Yum Yum visited Beekeeper Lee, who was collecting honey from a beehive. Excuse me, Beekeeper Lee, Yum Yum hollered from a distance. Have you seen my missing bagel? Beekeeper Lee raised her bee veil. Bagel? What in the sweet name of honey is a bagel? It is round and it has a hole in the middle, Yum Yum explained. Ah, Beekeeper Lee said with a nod. She pointed to the thick swarm of bees circling over her head. Is that a bagel? Yum Yum frowned. No, that is not my bagel. I am sorry, Yum Yum, Beekeeper Lee said. I know about the buzzing, buzzing business of bees, but I know nothing about bagels. So, Yum Yum is going to these people, asking them about the bagel, right? And so we also want to be reading to find out how do the people in Yum Yum's community work together to solve his problem? He has a problem right now. So in this next part of the story, I really want you to think about how the people in the story work together to solve Yum Yum's problem, okay? All right, let's keep going. Page 119. Ready, follow. Yum Yum sat down on a quiet hillside and moaned. All hope for a bagel seemed lost. Then a delicious smell tickled his nose. He sniffed curiously. Where was it coming from? Yum Yum looked into the valley and blinked with delight. <gasps> there was O's heavenly bakery. Hmm, what do you think is at O's Heavenly Bakery? Can you make a prediction? You can tell me. Hmm, okay. Let's see if you're right. All right, fingers ready on page 121. Ready, follow. Yum Yum rushed into O's Heavenly Bakery where Baker O was making one of her famous rice cakes. Baker O, oh, Yum Yum pleaded, please tell me you have my missing bagel. Baker O oh sprinkled a few pine nuts on the rice cake. Bagel? What in a baker's kitchen is a bagel? It is round and it has a hole in the middle, Yum Yum explained. I am very sorry, Yum Yum, Baker O oh said. I have not seen your missing bagel. But maybe that pigeon tapping at the window has better news for you. The pigeon is back. Hmm. Do you think, think something might happen here to help Yum Yum get his bagel? Hmm. Let's see. Go ahead and turn to page 122. All right. And I'm going to move over here. Hopefully. Okay, 
Fingers ready on the top of 122. Ready, follow. Baker O opened the window. The bird flew in and landed on Yum Yum's shoulder with a message. While Baker O fed the pigeon rice cake crumbs, Yum Yum read the message aloud. Dear Yum Yum, thanks a million for your order of one bagel to go. I'm real sorry, but my bagels only stay fresh on the same day they're made. So I'll do the next best thing and send you the secret recipe for my number one New York bagel. Good luck, Joe, from Joe's To Go Bagels. P.S. Recipe on other side. Baker O. studied the recipe, then frowned. I am afraid I do not have all the special ingredients to make a New York bagel, yum yum. My sweet rice cakes are made with rice, sugar, and water. This bagel calls for flour, sea salt, and honey. Yum Yum jumped. Did you say flour, sea salt, and honey? Yes, Baker O replied. I will return, Yum Yum promised. Hmm, okay, can you predict where Yum Yum is gonna go? Hmm. And remember, our read to find out question is how do the people in Yum Yum's community work together to solve his problem? All right, let's go ahead and turn to 124. All right, fingers ready at the top. Ready, follow. And indeed, he did return with Farmer On and Fisherman Key and Beekeeper Lee. I have the flower, exclaimed Farmer On. I have the sea salt exclaimed Fisherman Key, and I have the honey, exclaimed Beekeeper Lee. It was time to make a New York bagel. Baker O tied an apron around Yum Yum's waist. Following the recipe, Yum Yum instructed Farmer On to sift flour into a mixing bowl. He instructed Fisherman Key to sprinkle in the sea salt. He instructed Beekeeper Lee to spoon in the golden honey. Then Baker O poured in the water and tossed in a pinch of yeast. Hmm, I think I see a community working together to help Yum Yum. All right, fingers ready on page 126. Ready, follow. Yum Yum kneaded the fragrant dough and formed it into a ring shape. He perfected the edges, especially for the hole in the middle. He dropped the dough into a large pot of simmering water. Minutes later, it floated to the top. Then Yum Yum sprinkled it with sesame seeds and into the oven it went. Yum Yum watched the dough magically puff higher and higher until it nearly filled the whole oven, until it was a golden brown bagel. The bagel was so big that Farmer On, Fisherman Key, Beekeeper Lee, and Baker O had to help Yum Yum carry it out of O's Heavenly Bakery. They all grunted as they set the bagel down under a persimmon tree on the quiet hillside. Yum Yum broke off a piece of the bagel for each of his friends. Mmm, said Farmer On. Oh, said Fisherman Key. Ah, said Beekeeper Lee. Mmm, said Baker O. Go ahead and turn. Page 128. <laughs> Sorry. The moment had finally come for Yum Yum to eat his New York bagel. He closed his eyes and took his first bite. It was a perfect bagel with a hint of honey, so sweet it made him sigh. It was soft and plump and chewy and delicious all in one bite. It was so heavenly he could even taste the curious hole in the middle. Yum Yum declared, at last I have my bagel. <laughs> all right, and that's the end of our story. So I hope you liked it. I hope you were following along and I hope you can use this read aloud to help you with your Tuesday work in your packet. So remember to use examples from the story 
to support your answer of um, how did the people in Yum Young's community work together to solve his problem? All right, I'm excited to read your answers. I hope you are well and enjoy. Sorry, I just hit cancel. It's not what I meant to do. Okay. <laughs> 